have some very lovely young ladies with us in camps and with our army. And the armies did have some ladies with them. They were called camp followers. Yeah. Um, the British Army, in fact, would allow one for her company. Um, the ladies would get half ration. A child would get a quarter ration. Yeah, uh, well, they were expected to wash and men's clothing. If their husband died, they had Captain so many days to get remarried, well, otherwise they'd be <laughs> marched out of camp. Uh, also you during battles, at the end of battles, battles they, they would be expected wine. to be nurses. <laughs> and whether they wanted to or not, they had to go and help folks who were wounded or sick. And the American Army had the same way. You say, well, why would they follow? Well, if you were a middle or lower class woman and your husband went off to war, Somebody died last what did you have left? Uh, you might as well go with them. Son, too much. Most people didn't have uh, the property and uh, wealth that we have today. Yeah, um, somebody really did. Ladies, it was stay home and their soldiers go off. kind of put out because uh, so you might as well follow. I thought it was the same. I guess the other person was important too. But <laughs> And we are lucky because we have we now have people moving out. Troops to your right are American militia. Troops to your left are Green Rangers and the Green Coats. They responded to an American attack. <laughs> These are King's Rangers that are coming out to your left now from the British Army. These were from Canada. And Tory loyalists who say loyal to the King. Yeah. One of the misnomers about the American Revolution is that everybody in America was for the revolution. In fact, it's kind of like today, where it's a confusing situation. One third of the population was for the king. One third was for the rebels and the uprising. And one third could care less and one third could go away. Four of the American militias have just come onto the field to your right. You notice... These folks are lightly equipped. They kneel down and try to make themselves smaller. Some of the American militia are going to try to hide behind those bushes over there. And again, pay attention to how these guys fight as compared to when the British regulars and the American Continental Line and the French troops that are with the Americans come onto the battle. We'll bring them down to the left side side. Make it stand. Hold here, I'll check. The just went Century Cannon was the king of the battlefield. So if you had superiority in artillery, you had a great advantage. You heard the drums to your left. That was the American, I mean the British Army starting to form up. The Rangers are out in front. The British commander has now decided he needs to bring more force to bear to drive the Americans back off the battlefield. We'll show these lads, boys. You can hear the drums. Those drums mean form up. You got the demotion as well? Yeah. You're nothing. And we only have a few troops on the field. You can start to see that smoke hanging yeah. around. Just imagine if there was five, six thousand soldiers firing at one time. They move very quickly. Now to your left. The British regulars are starting to come onto the field. The British artillery is responding, trying to drive the American Oh, you ain't fired. Sounds like one musket. That's a great volley. Now coming onto the field is the British light infantry. Followed by their line company, their grenadiers with the tall hats. Grenadiers were the tallest men. They tried to get to the their six foot. Then they made them even taller. Tried to intimidate their opponent. Now the British Army has moved out. 
Now they're moving up on line. Again, watch the winning. Kneeling, taking advantage of cover. Continental line, the British line. Standing upright in their line. Going full of cover. I'm Where we are? Yeah, it's not a good thing. <laughs> no, do you know where we are? <laughs> okay. All right. So you let me know, huh? Okay, good enough. Okay.